comes the veteran. And, you know, I do the usual, you know, ask if he's got a dollar, you know, and the affected tone of voice. And, okay, he, like, he goes around the corner. And then we break it up, and I go around the do corner. Do the voice you get. Uh, oh, wait. Don't that look like a dollar? And he holds up his money. <laughs> so he was splashy. And he's going around the corner. He leaves. I forget about him. I light a joint. I'm going in the alley to smoke it. And he's back there, and he, like, pops up in back of me and indicates, like, it's on, you know, and uh, it's like throwing punches at me and pushing me and I'm backing up saying, get the amp away from me, you goddamn junkie. And he's, so, you know, like, come on, it's just you and me, just you and me, come on, come on. And I'm like circling away, circling away. And at a certain point, bends down, he looks down and picks up like a sandwich sized piece of concrete from this broken up patch and like puts it back like he's in a pitcher's pose and I'm not sure if he's gonna come at me and try to hit me with it or throw it, neither option is acceptable. So at that point, not being willing to deal with it, not feeling nimble enough to get out of the way if he throws it. And I'm wearing like an exposed, you know, like no sleeve shirt. I uh, step into him, I snap a kick to his stomach, which is just, you know, if you don't like come in order to drop him, and I get my left hand up and catch his, his uh, descending right hand holding a piece of concrete. We grapple there for a moment, and he's like getting the better of me, pushing me in the wall, kind of getting the top of me, and then he like manages to push the piece of concrete into my face from about a foot away. Oh. And then we're grappling with this piece of concrete in my face. And all the while he's kind of getting the better and these are just getting really strike the other and then he drops the concrete and then i'm like pushing the wall down 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 and then i get him in a headlock and actually tore that's when i tore my uh a piece of bone at the tendon you I got guess. him in a headlock yeah i had him oh, in a headlock he had a very unpleasant experience this wasn't the fight he was looking for at all uh yeah, yeah. at least there's that What's that? At least, At least that. there's that, yes. And what saved me, the whole time I'm screaming, help, call the police, call the police, help, help, at the top of my lungs. And sure enough, if Linda Chozer wasn't Shut in the up. church, doing something in the kitchen, looks out the window, calls the police, and at the point where I was done, he got out of the headlock. He got out of the thumb lock. I'm holding his thumb for like, you know, a long time. And now that's one army camp, but then he's also getting me, getting me so. And as we come up, we, I finally release him, the headlock, the thumb. We come up together and he's got me in what's called a guillotine. And it was like, okay, I think this is it. I think he's gonna choke me out. And just then I hear, get off of Fred. And it's Linda, she called the cops. And it takes forever, you know, and who are you? What, you know, what's your favorite color? What are the color of your eyes? Uh, and so she, when I hear get off of Fred, she came out and there was someone else there, I think. At that point, he let me go and he walked away saying, he hit me, he hit me, he hit me. <laughs> and I just like, well, I like caught my breath. I'm so surprised I didn't like it. You know, my heart didn't explode. I was like, haven't been that out of breath in forever. And so sure enough, it was a quick minute, but that uh, the cops got there and I start giving my story and then the witness, the independent witness, if it wasn't for her, it never happened. As the cop said, well, you got your story, he's got his, you know, and then he goes, but there was a witness. So she doesn't work for you. And so that was it, like, oh my God, yeah. Other, you know, once you get jumped, then everything went well, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was a witness. And so he disappeared. I, they took me to the hospital, I didn't want to go. And I'm glad I protested because I wouldn't I was like, hey, I'm homeless. I didn't even want to come. And they were like, well, uh -huh. and well the, the, the two orderlies and the cop there, they kind of gave me the impression I had no choice to get in the ambulance. So they're like, oh, okay. And then they just gave me some homeless, you don't have to pay paperwork to fill out, which if I'm not mistaken, all I gave up was my HIPAA rights. And took some x-rays and gave me a consent to treatment form to sign before other things could be done like he bit me at one point so maybe test all right you know x-ray my head he did hit me from a foot away with it 
but so they x-rayed your shoulder and determined like a piece of bone had actually broken off a little nub that the tendon or whatever holding the muscle attaches to but one i didn't sign any said <laughs> to treatment that was like okay that's about all we're gonna do there and i'm really glad i did do that you know just to know exactly what it was and it's going to be six to ten weeks and now i can use it enough to do most of the things i can hold a blower in my left hand Oh, that's what I was worried about. You lose that blower hand. Yeah, no, it's, I got the handheld blower. 